everyone. My name is Dr. Aram Ilias. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I've been in practice for almost two decades and see thousands of patients a year and been studying the interaction between textiles and the skin for the past decade. I'm the CEO and founder of a sun protective clothing line called Amber Noon, which was based on my years of textile research. I really worked to develop textiles that offered UV protection through washes, through 40 washes and beyond based on inherent properties of the textile without the need to add UV chemical finishes. My research is also the basis for the textile that I've created called UV Tech. So what is UV Tech? UV Tech is a concept based on the research that I performed over the past decade where I've cataloged thousands and thousands of textiles I really spent the time to study and develop an understanding of textiles, their interaction with their skin, and the properties of textiles that we could capture to protect our skin, while also bearing in mind that I didn't want there to be added UV chemical finishes. Why is that? Textiles and skin definitely interact because bear in mind that 95% of your body surface area comes into contact with textiles in some shape or form during the course of the day or night, whether it be your clothing items, your towels, your bed sheets, whatever it might be. And in my practice, what I've learned is that when patients come in with rashes and they can't figure out what's causing it, it can be really challenging as a detective to kind of figure out what is the story behind this rash. When somebody develops a rash and they can't figure out what's causing it, one of the most common first steps patients take is to either change their laundry detergent or to figure out if it's been changed at some point. One of the most common things that patients will say to me when they develop a rash and they can't figure out what's triggering it is that they change their laundry detergent. What's fascinating to me is after years and years of performing contact dermatitis related patch testing, where we're trying to decipher what patients could be allergic to in the course of deciphering the causes of their rash, it's so uncommon that I actually uncover an allergy to the detergent, yet everyone thinks about it. But what this does tell me is that people do in their mind have an understanding that their skin is interacting with textiles but somehow they only think about their detergent and nothing else in the process. They never think about the dyes that go into their textiles, the other chemicals that go into developing textiles. And the concern that I have as a dermatologist is what happens with those chemicals. When you're sweating and you're wearing clothing, some of those chemicals could be released onto your skin. How about when you're sleeping at night and your skin is rubbing against those textiles? We know that dyes and other finishes can rub off. If you've ever had a clothing item that's color rubbed off into other types of textiles, you know it's possible, yet no one ever thinks about that interaction with their skin. So I really started to study textiles to really gain a better understanding of how to decipher what's in them. Remember with textiles, we don't have the privilege of looking at an ingredient label. If there's a potential allergy to something in a skincare product, a shampoo, a conditioner, something that you might be using as a personal care product, all we have to do is actually look through the ingredient label, figure out what you might be allergic to, and try to decipher it from there. However, with clothing items, you don't have that privilege. When you buy a piece of clothing, when you look at the label, if you turn it inside out, you'll find a label on the inside. That's not an ingredient label. It doesn't tell you every step of the process that that clothing item went through to get to your home. All it really tells you in terms of disclosures is the fiber content. This one, for example, says that it's 60% cotton and 40% polyester. That's, that's all we get. That's all we really know about it. Increasingly, in the past five to 10 years, you're probably noticing that there's a lot of textiles that are coming out with other claims though. I'm seeing textiles with sun protection. We're seeing it with insect repellents. We're seeing antimicrobial textiles. We're, you're seeing wrinkle resistant textiles different types of claims that textiles are making. I'm even seeing cooling textiles and warming textiles. So how does a textile achieve these properties? We'll talk about each of those textiles along the way, but the focus of my research really swung over to UV protection. What I really discovered is a lot of sun protective textiles that have been increasingly available actually are 
Even though I preach day in and day out for the need for sun protection, I fully recognize that many of my patients will voice concerns about safety with regards to sunscreen products. There are so many common concerns about absorption of chemical sunscreens, what they could do to our health, the environment. Then when I started to recommend sun protective clothing about a decade ago, when I started to really understand that, you know, a lot of times the sun protection offered by a standard white t-shirt might be as low as the three or four, the concern I had in starting to recommend sun protective clothing items is what made those textiles sun protective? I'd look at labels and they didn't disclose a lot of information. Some brands do go through some trouble to explain that there's zinc embedded in the clothing item. But when I went through the literature to really figure out what is in those textiles, there's not a lot of data out there. But what we do know is that the textiles that actually have claims for sun protection often have the exact same sunscreen products that patients are trying to avoid putting on their skin actually embedded in the textile. We have zinc and titanium, which are commonly used mineral sunscreen products. Those are often embedded in the fibers of the textiles and chemical sunscreens, which are what we call organic filters. There are studies that have shown that after the application of chemical sunscreens on the skin, they can be absorbed into the bloodstream. When it comes to textiles, however, those same chemical sunscreens are often coated on the surface of the textile. Our concern here then is what if in recommending sun protective textiles to my patients as they try to avoid or reduce their exposure to sunscreen products, what if they're still being exposed to those exact same products that they're trying to avoid and yet we just don't have a lot of data to understand what that means? So I started to gather textiles. I'd buy different brands of clothing, whether it be routine clothing brands that my kids were wearing every day, their school uniforms, their sports uniforms. Without the privilege of a product label that tells us what's in textiles, I started to really research textiles and really gather brand after brand to study them. We would magnify these textiles, look close up at those textile fibers, study them of their UV protective qualities as well so that we could really gain a better understanding after cataloging all of the textiles that I was coming across, whether it be sun protective brands, whether it be non-sun protective brands. By gathering these brands, really starting to build a catalog of different fibers and different fabrics and different claims, I was really trying to gain a better understanding of what is in our textiles so that it can guide not only what I explain to patients, but also provide better choices to patients. This is how UV Tech really was born. Once I had gathered all of these textiles and cataloged thousands and thousands of textiles, different compositions, varying compositions, I was really able to take a step back and say, well, what mattered and what didn't matter? What I really started to find was that it wasn't necessary to treat our textiles with additional chemical finishes or UV protection. I found it a little astounding that it was even out there because I felt as though, well, I don't want my children, my family being exposed to more chemicals and unknown sources that are not even disclosed to the consumer. I'd rather have us using products that we knew what was in there. By choosing textiles that did not have UV chemical finishes, but still offered UV protection because I've tested it, I felt much more confident that this was a much safer product for now and for the future. You don't wanna find yourself in that same conundrum where you're using a product with the best of intentions. You're trying to protect your skin. You're trying to protect your health. You're thinking about preventing and reducing the incidence of skin cancer, the last thing we want to do is expose ourselves to one more thing that could be problematic.